here we're going to determine the possible number of positive and negative zeros of this polynomial. So you may want to sketch a table just to help you organize your zeros. We're going to start by looking at the degree of the polynomial. This is a seventh degree polynomial. And since it's a seventh degree polynomial, our totals and the numbers here should be seven. Next, we're going to start by identifying uh, our positive zeros. To do that, all we have to do is just simply count how many times the sign changed from one term to another. So let's look at the first from first to second. Did it change? No. How about from second to third? Yes. From third to fourth? Yes. Fourth to fifth? Yes. <laughs> and it changed one more time. So a total number of how many times did it change? Yes, four times. So that means we have four zeros. So we're going to go ahead and place a four there for our positive zeros. And now we're going to determine the number of negative zeros. To do that, we need to identify um, our odd degree terms. And it looks like we have three of them. We're going to change their sign to their opposite. And now we're going to look at the polynomial to see how many times did the sign change from one term to the next. So starting with the first, we have a negative, and the second term is a positive, so yes, there was a change. Looking at the other terms, they're all positive, so there were no more changes, so there was only one sign change, so we should have a one for our negative zeros. The first two columns are the columns that you add to see if they add up to your total, four plus one, it does not equal seven. So what are we gonna put in this adjustment column so it does add up to seven? Yes, we need a two there. Going to the second row, creating another scenario. Uh, we're in the positive column. Can we subtract two from that four? Yes. When we subtract two, we're left with two. Can we subtract two in the negatives? No, so that number stays. Let's add those two columns, because we only add the first two columns. Do they add up to seven? No, they don't. So what do we need here so that they add up to seven? Yes, we need a four. Our last scenario, Let's go to the positive column. Can I subtract two from that without going into the negatives? Yes, if I subtract two, I get a zero. You can have a zero, you just can't go into the negatives. For the negative column, I cannot subtract two without going into the negative, so that number stays. We add those two columns. Do they add up to seven? No, they don't. Well, so what do I need in this adjustment column so that it adds up to seven? Yes, a six. So now we can determine by Descartes' rules of signs that the possible number of positive zeros is four, two, or zero, one negative zero, and six, four, or two non-real zeros.